Let me ask you something. Do you actually want to go solar? Well, in this video today, we're going to talk about some very important positive aspects of it and negative aspects of it and clear up some misconceptions because there is a lot of that out there. Stay with me here and we are going to clear up all of that and we're going to determine whether solar is right for you or not. Because believe it or not, it's not right for everyone. So when it comes to solar, you really need to educate yourselves. I want you to go out there and I want you to look at a thousand different solar websites and decide what is right for you. And I'll start off by saying solar, the initial investment in it is expensive and the payoffs of solar are not a one to one ratio of offsetting your electric bill. That's not what it's about. And if you just want to do that, I'm not sure it's right for you. What solar is, is a way to gain independence from a grid that is old, it is unreliable in some places, and it is increasing in costs like it did recently for us. Now you say, well, you're on solar. Well, not exactly. I am still working on this system and installing our new HVAC units that will run off it. If you watch my channel at all, you'll see where we are in the process. We do run our solar system exclusively on days where we really don't need to heat or cool the house. So with that being said, I can tell you that our power co-op in this area, which I am bound to, I can't shop in an open market, I have to go through them, and they shop in the open market for us, they're prices have doubled. And if your house is all electric, like ours is, doubling your electric price is expensive. And if you're not budgeted for something like that, you're in deep trouble. So I've had a lot of people comment on my videos that solar and the price that I told people that I paid for my system, and we'll get to that in a minute, is too expensive. And it would never ever pay off for them. And some of them are right. Because if they're looking at a one-to-one -one comparison of just dollars in the initial spend on this and its longevity compared to what they can get for electric or natural gas or whatever it is, then they're correct. But they are not thinking about all the other factors I just talked about in terms of grid reliability, in terms of increasing costs, et cetera, et cetera. So let's dispel some myths that a lot of detractors of solar have left on my videos or just innocent questions that people are uneducated about. Solar panels have been around since the 1950s. That's almost 70 years. They've been in the commercial residential market since the mid 1970s. Technology has advanced so far reliability of this stuff has advanced so far that um, there are still problems, of course, like with any technology, but they are so small now that that should not be a concern for getting solar. A lot of people ask me, well, could this hold up to hail or hurricane force winds? Yes, all these things are engineered. These panels are engineered with a glass that is resistant to hailstones up to an inch at 50 miles an hour. I'd say that's pretty good because that does not happen very often. And if you're concerned about hurricane force winds, the panels are rated for hurricane force winds. And if you're concerned, well, about the, uh, the racking system, make sure the racking system you get is engineered properly for the area that you're in. This one is over-engineered for my area. So I have zero concern. Now, can anything happen? Of course. Anything can happen to your house. Anything can happen to a lot of things you own. Another huge concern people express is about maintenance. And that they say that there's too much maintenance on a system. Well, that is true of older systems when it comes to batteries. This system with my lithium iron phosphate batteries has zero maintenance. Okay, maybe 1%. 1% is cleaning off these panels if they get dirty and I see my power generation drop, that's it, nothing else to do. And I gotta tell you, these solar ever panels that I got are amazing in cloudy conditions like we have today. They still put out a very high percentage and I can't tell you what it is right now, 
but they are still generating the amount of voltage needed to power my inverters and to put uh, power back into my batteries and to power the house on a cloudy day. I'm highly impressed with these things. So also a lot of detractors will say that your panels are gonna wear out fast. Well, no, the technology has advanced. These have a 25 year warranty on them. They last 25, 30 years before, you know, I mean, their power generation is rated to start or 80%, I think it is, after 15 years, something like that. I have to look at the specs. And you need to do your research and look at the specs of every piece of equipment you buy. My batteries are warrantied for a long time. My inverters are warrantied for a long time. So I am not worried about it. Now, additionally, if you are going solar to just be green, that's awesome. More power to you. However, you have to understand the embodied energy that's contained within these. Now, yes, after that embodied energy of production and mining of the lithium and all that for the batteries and the silicon production is overcome, there's zero emissions. Cool. But you need to take those things into consideration first and do your research about how much embodied energy is in these panels and the batteries and the inverters and all of that. So I'll let you do that research. Some people are really adamant that there's pretty much no pollution and energy that goes into uh, producing all this stuff. We know that's not true. And then there's some people who say that there's a ridiculous amount of energy and pollution that goes into something like this, which is also not true. It's somewhere in the middle. And that's the same with modern petroleum extraction. How much energy is used to pull that out of the ground? Well, way less than it used to be. Do your research. So here's an important part. I do not want you guys to get taken to the bank in terms of your solar system. There's a lot of used car solar salesmen out there pushing solar systems onto people's roofs that uh, they can't afford and that they're tied into very long contracts on. Now, there's a lot of lawsuits out there against solar companies that have sold these things to people and they can't get out of a 30, 25, 30 year long contract they give them the equipment for free, it's on the roof. Essentially what that solar company is doing is utilizing the roof rent free. Well, the cost of the equipment, of course, is factored in there. And the potential for a federal tax credit or even state tax credit. You have to weigh all these things, okay? Do not fall for these types of things. Now you're gonna say, Eric, what about SRECs? Solar Renewable Energy Credits. Well, those are credits that only seven states currently have, and they are traded on the open market. So you sell power back into the grid where you can, where net metering is available, and we'll talk about that in a second. You so sell that power back, and then you can generate some uh, appreciation on your investment of that solar credit that you've uh, sold back. Now, I'm not 100% sure about that. Texas doesn't have that. You need to do more research on it. However, states have dropped SRECs. States have drastically reduced the amount of uh, cents per kilowatt hour that they are offering for SRECs in the middle of when someone has uh, has that contract. So I know in Georgia it dropped from what 13.7 cents to 3.7 cents. So if you're expecting to get 13.7 cents back, now you're only getting 3.7. Is that a bait and switch? So watch out. In sales, some solar companies will offer credits that don't really exist or are not you're not eligible for. And you need to do your research ahead of time every single time you do your research. So here is a big thing that you have to figure out when getting a solar system. What type of system do you want? Do you want an off-grid system? Do you want a grid-tied system? Or do you want a hybrid system, which is a grid-tied system with battery backup? For us, we have an off-grid system. The batteries are there for cloudy days and for nighttime use. The rest of the system is powering the house during the day while keeping the batteries topped off. And this is the best option for us. We use it like a generator, essentially. And we still are grid tied 
just in case I have to do emergency maintenance on this for some weird reason something breaks, which is not going to be very often at all, hopefully. But we keep that service for 15 bucks a month for the hookup. So that is pretty negligible if you're spending money on an entire solar system. Now with a grid tie system, an exclusive grid tied system, when the grid is down, you don't have any power. Even though you have a solar system on your house, you cannot utilize it because you don't have anywhere for that power to go or that power to uh, be stored. Do not get a grid tied system, whatever you do, because that's basically a waste of money in my opinion. I would say get a hybrid system because if the grid is down, you have battery backup and you can utilize the power that you've put into your batteries if the grid is down for a day or two or whatever it is. In my opinion, an off-grid system is the absolute best way to go because then you are only reliant on you and this equipment. Nothing else to do with the grid. So let's talk about net metering, which is essentially just selling power back into the grid to lower your power bill or to uh, get those energy credits like we talked about earlier. Only certain states allow that. Now in Texas, it's not a statewide deal. It's with each individual provider and our power co-op in this area allows it. But let me tell you what's going on with that. We have a couple friends down the road who have solar systems. They are grid tied and they sell back into the grid. They're breaching their contracts. I have one friend who's a lawyer, so he might be working on something against the power company, but I want you to be careful about that. I have another friend has a huge system, 15 and a half kilowatts, sells a ton of power back into the grid and he received a bill six months ago, I think it was, for $180. He did not change his power consumption on his property. How did he get a bill for $180 when he sells a massive amount of energy back to the power company? All that being said, if that's what you wanna do, cool, but you need to understand the issues that arise with it. And in my opinion, still an off-grid system obviously batteries, is the best way to go. Now that type of system is gonna cost you more because batteries are expensive. So I did a video not too long ago about how much our whole system cost us. And I get so many comments about how expensive it is. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. It depends on your area. Certain states, certain solar installers are going to be more expensive. Labor's more expensive. Equipment's more expensive. It is dependent on where you live. So for us here, $15,500 for a system that will run our house with no problem, except for the heating and cooling, is a really great deal. If you have maybe a few electric appliances in your house and you're running off natural gas and you're running uh, for your dryer, your stove, your hot water, then it doesn't make sense to get it. So friends, you need to do research for your area where you live to make sure that it's right for you. You need to research labor costs in the area, equipment costs in the area, and if your house is correct for it, so on and so forth. Maybe a smaller system, half that size, absolutely. Then maybe the cost works out for you. You have to crunch the numbers. You can't just off the cuff think that it's too expensive because it might not be. Now, for those of you who are concerned about the way my wiring looks right now, don't worry. We've got conduit and we've got a trough for everything. We're still in the process of testing things out, making sure everything's correct. It's going in, so don't worry. Now, to give you an idea of how much this would have cost if I would have paid somebody else to do it, it could have been upwards of double the price. That's why I educated myself for two years. I studied, 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 talked to solar companies, talked to electricians, everybody, before I put it in myself. I saved myself 10 grand. Now, is that for everybody? No, but I wanna encourage you that you could do it. So friends, I hope I've cleared up some things for you. Don't get taken to the bank. Do a ton of research before you even jump into anything like this. Realize what it is and what it is not. For us, it's about independence. It's about security. It's about us mitigating rising costs or mitigating unreliability in the grid system. If you wanna put your full faith in the system, cool. I am not opposed to that, but you shouldn't be watching solar videos then. 
unless you have a genuine curiosity of what it is and whether it's right for you. Now I want you to click on this playlist right here, which is our entire playlist on how we built and put in our solar system. Have a great day. We love you. See you next time. Bye.